Swift and Tips Podcast. Nowadays, you are an advocate engineer. I'm mm -hmm. curious. Uh, I, I mean, I Googled the answer, but I would like to, uh, from <laughs> you to, you know, tell us what is the difference between a software developer, an advocate developer? It's the same. Are you mm -hmm. going actually something? Or mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, funny enough, I um, just listened to a podcast. Um, um, it's the co-recursive podcast. I can really <laughs> recommend it. It's absolutely fantastic. And in the most recent episode, the host was being interviewed by two other people. And, you know, he posted this episode on, on his own podcast. And he <laughs> talked about developer relations as well, because that is something that he went into. And the thing that he said was, developer relations is this really weird job that has so many dimensions and it's really hard to grasp because it you know it really is what you make it um and so let me tell you what it looks like from my position so whenever i try to explain what my job is i first tell people that i act as a two-way communication channel between the teams inside of Google, the product and engineering teams, and the outside developers who want to or need to use our technology. So okay. on the one hand, I want to tell them about the new things that we build and the amazing new features, but in a realistic way. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to oversell this. So I'm not a marketing person. I'm not you know, trying to convince somebody that they absolutely must use our product because everything else, you know, sucks or is bad or whatever. <laughs> you know, okay. I try to be, um, you know, realistic and um, open-minded and tell people, you know, uh, where, where the limitations are. But on the other hand, my role is to listen to people and hear about how they use our technology, what's working well, what's not working well, what's missing, and you know where they are frustrated. And that is it's my role to then take that feedback, go back to our engineering teams, and make them feel the empathy, um, you know, feel the pain, if you will. So I, yeah. <laughs> I, I go to meet with people at conferences, and then they tell me, oh, you know. Uh, this really doesn't work and it's a bad experience. And I'll, I'll go back to the engineering teams and I'll tell them, hey, you know, this is this is a bad user experience. We really need to do something about it. Can you find some time to do it? Or sometimes I might even implement it myself. And that comes back to your original question. Do you still code? Um, and the answer is yes. So on the iOS SDK for Firebase, I implemented a couple of features. So for example, if you look at um, the, the repository, there are a couple of um, packages that um, introduce combined support for Firebase. That was okay. me. Nice. And there are a couple of things in Firestore that I worked on and a couple of um, smaller things here and there. I also implemented the original Swift SDK for the Google Gemini LLM. So the, mm -hmm. the very first Swift SDK, that was mostly me. Um, we've since moved the implementation to um, a proper SDK engineering team. I still contribute to that. But mm -hmm. there are a couple of other people who now do the main implementation work. But I still work with the team. Mm -hmm. I work on the sample applications every now and then. And I review their PRs and provide feedback and uh, make sure that this is easy to use. And that is another part of the job, being the zero of customer. So whenever mm -hmm. our engineering teams and product teams build a new product, developer relations will come in and will take a look at the, at the API, first mm -hmm. of all, and at the API design before something even gets implemented. And then we'll provide feedback and we'll say, well, you know, it might be better if you implemented it this way. Or, for example, you know, recently um, we started working on um, adding vector support to Firestore so that you can um, support or store your vector embeddings. Mm -hmm. And that was a multi-stage process. So first of all, the team implemented this on the back end, and then they implemented the JavaScript and um, Python SDKs for it. And we were lacking the client-side SDKs for Swift and Kotlin and all the other programming languages. And then once they started, 
I went into the API document and I noticed that um, they they were missing support for the codable protocol. And that is a very important thing because mm -hmm. when you map data from Firestore to Swift, you want to be able to, um, to, to use codable because that makes the mapping process mm -hmm. literally a one-liner instead of having to write all the code yourself and then the code breaking because you made a change to um, the data model in your Firestore database. So you want to support Codable, but that is a thing that doesn't come out of the box if you implement the SDK. And because our engineers are not purely focused on just iOS, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the engineers working on, uh, on, on, the, on Firestore or on um, the real-time database or all those backend implementations, they are mm -hmm. generalists, right? So they they might have a background in C plus plus or or JavaScript, um, and they have learned some Swift, but they are not iOS developers by trade, if if, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So we have to come in and we have to look at that and then say, okay, so the canonical way to do that is to support the codable protocol. So I went in, um, left a couple of remarks, and then. Uh, they added that on, and now um, it's there. And then the next step for me is to take a look at the implementation once it's available, <clears throat> try it out in um, in a sample application, and provide feedback in terms of does this really work? Does it really feel good? Um, and then working with them to iterate and 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 launch this. Wow, that that sounds like a lot. Like a lot of work, and and I'm work. I'm I'm now, uh, you know, wonder how many engineers you normally work. Uh, are all of them uh, advocate engineers too, or or you are the only one for Firebase? Or uh, uh, no. Okay. So um oh yeah, and 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 on the role title. So for the longest, um, if I walk up on stage and I introduce myself, um. Mm -hmm. I might fall back into saying, hello, my name is Peter Fries, and I'm a developer advocate on the Firebase team. So, you know, that is the, the role that I was hired at, a developer advocate. And the advocate has this two-way thing in, 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 in the word meaning, right? So mm -hmm. I listen to user feedback, and then I advocate on their <laughs> behalf to the engineering teams. Uh -huh. But a while ago, we made a decision to um, call our developer relations engineers DREs as developer relation engineers. So DRE. to, uh, and, and a DRE is equivalent to a SWE, software engineer, right? Mm -hmm. In addition to the DREs, we also have tech writers. These are the people who write the documentation yeah. and uh, work with us on the samples. And we've got program managers who help us to uh, not lose track of what we need to work on okay. and, you know, remind us, hey, can you please provide an update for this project or, you know, who help us actually run bigger projects? Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, we are working on so many different things at the same time that it is often easy to lose track of everything that you need to work on. And then it's good to have somebody who's able to set up the structure, set up a tracker, and then set up meetings on a regular basis for everybody to sync and, and, and come back and, you know, uh, give an update and, you know, stay on track and not mm -hmm. forget about all the other important things. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, but, so your, your question, how many people are there on, on, on DevRel? So, um, on, on my direct team, it's somewhere about 10 people, I would say. So that is the team that's responsible for creating the content for our YouTube channel, um, both for iOS and Android and the web and all the other platforms that we support. Then so we have, we have um, the blog that we um, need to um, need to write articles for. Most of the time, we, we collaborate with other people on that. We also um, create talks to go to conferences, go to conferences. So I'll be in, uh, in Leeds in October with one of my colleagues. His name is Rosario. And we'll be doing Firebase office hours so people can walk up and ask us questions mm -hmm. and support Google I.O. and uh, Cloud Next and all the other um, official first party um, events that Google runs. 
So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's a lot of work. And then um, beyond that team, we've got other teams who work on more on the code samples, who create um, solution guides that go beyond documenting how a simple API works and show how to use Firebase technology together with other Google technology to build vertical solutions, for example, for healthcare or travel or banking or what, mm -hmm. you know, those, those kinds of verticals. And then we've got DevRel for all the other products, right? So DevRel for Flutter, for example, DevRel for Android. And those teams are even bigger than than, than Firebase. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, it's difficult to exactly say uh, how many how many are on the team, because um, I, I honestly don't have the number on top of my mind. No, I mean, but yeah, but I I can imagine that you never get get bored because you have a lot of things uh, going on. Yeah, exactly, and that is one of the perks of the job, right? So um, there's there's always something new, there's always something exciting going on. Uh, it never gets boring. Mm -hmm. um, if anything, there is maybe a little bit um, too much of a good thing, right? So a little bit too much work sometimes. And, um, so I'm, I'm going on a vacation in, in two days. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm hoping to recharge. And then when I come back, um, I'll be excited to, to work on the next thing. So we're preparing, um, demo day, which will be later in the year. And that's going to be a virtual event where we will show how to use our our new features and products that we announced at Google I.O. and build something real world, um, real worldish with it. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, that that is um, a project in itself, working with um, a whole bunch of people on it. 